Well, I've never seen this before. So this client reached out to me and said, Mike, I've got this hole in my patio. And whenever somebody reaches out and says something like that, I immediately think that there are just a few pavers sinking down in a certain area. And that's somewhat typical in terms of lack of compaction or various other problems. But in this case, the photos that I got sent before I went out to quote it actually showed a hole in the patio. This had sunk down. A client said that it started with two pavers and then with the amount of rain that we've gotten this year, that just became this entire section. It's about 10 square feet that just completely sunk down. I've seen photos online of certain rodents maybe getting into a base of a patio, but usually you see some sort of trail going to a certain area that has sunk. In this case, the photo showed none of that. I asked a lot of people what they thought might have happened before I even went out to take a look. It seemed that the consensus was the backfill being the problem of the actual home builder where there's likely a bunch of boulders or larger rocks that created a pinch point and eventually a cavity opens up where they are able to settle which causes this to happen and it, when you see me start to actually dig this out we do get into an area where there is this larger boulder I can imagine that there's probably more around this backfilled area around the foundation but we did find this one and we actually went down almost about 18 inches so this would be beyond what we would even excavate for a patio. The top of the rock though, you're likely hitting it when you are in that excavation phase. That was probably about 12 inches down from top of patio. So a little bit more of an over dig for the patio, but if I'm digging out a patio, I'd probably nick the top of it and wanna pull that stone out. Now beyond that, there's other things that we would have done as well when building this patio that the initial installer didn't do. And some of the materials that were used also in the leveling layer being stone dust that we wouldn't have used. So we started, as you saw, pulling apart all of the pavers in this area. And then we go ahead and start to dig down to investigate, as well as just to prepare ourselves with a nice solid surface to be able to compact. So we pulled out that rock, dug down a nice little hole, and then put our small little compactor into the hole and started to compact around. Now we made sure to over dig in the area. And then as you can see, we're doing this in lifts. So we're starting at that 18 inch mark. And then I'm just working myself up in four inch lifts and moving gravel around to smooth it out, get a nice little pad and then work that compactor around. You can see that we are using water when we are compacting with a dense graded aggregate. It's very important to have moisture in it, to be able to compact it, lubricate it, and get it to a solid amount of compaction. So finally, I've got to a point where we've used all the gravel that was there and we're still about four inches down from where we need to be with our final base prep. So there, this settled quite a bit for that to be four inches missing from this plus the bedding layer probably about five inches total from where we need to be so I did bring some gravel with us this took about a quarter of a yard to actually fill in so you see me moving around watering it and then just working our way around with that compactor for that final lift we're using a gravel we're gonna match the exact aggregate that was installed there so we move that a gravel around get it in place water it down add that moisture and then work our way with that compactor. You also see me around the edges hitting it down with the mallet and a paver just to get that final compaction in those hard to reach areas with the compactor that are nice and close to those existing pavers. And one more time with the compactor and then we're prepared for our bedding layer. Now, like I mentioned, they use stone dust for their bedding layer. We're not going to match that. We're not gonna ever use stone dust. So in this case, we used HPB and we put our HPB in to our screed bars. Our screed bars just match the height of the bottom of the paver from the top of our slope and then down to the bottom of our slope, the bottom of paver as well. So we're just matching that top of pipe to bottom of paver on both areas. We do allow for a little bit of movement in the compaction of our HPB, so we do 
set those slightly higher, like literally less than an eighth of an inch higher than where they should be. So as mentioned, they used stone dust for their bedding layer, but in addition to that, they used a masonry sand for their jointing compound. So it's not even a jointing sand. Masonry sand is very fine. It washes out very easily. Jointing sand has angular particles, so it's a lot harder for it to actually wash out. And in this case, we're just gonna install our polymeric sand. The installer probably should have done in the first place, especially with this stone and the tight joints. And just looking around at the entirety of this project, the sand is pretty much washed out upwards of half an inch below where it should be and weeds have completely taken over some of the areas in this patio. So that's just what happens when you're not using an appropriate jointing compound. So we lay the rest of our pavers in place, use our mallet to knock them down. Now there was one chip stone, client had tons of this stone remaining from the project, a lot of stone in their garage. So we we're able to pick up one of those and put that in place for that chipped stone. One thing that we did with this paver that we're placing in the middle of the patio here is we're using the pavers that were stored in the garage that have no wear and tear on them whatsoever and putting it in a more discreet area of the patio. So I put it in the far corner of the patio, picked up the one that I was replacing it with, which was weathered, and used that to install in the middle of the patio. In that way, we're not having this standout stone in the middle of the patio that looks completely different when compared to the pavers all around it. And then we're just installing our polymeric sand, sweeping it around, and using our plate compactor to go ahead and compact that sand down to the bottom of the joint consolidator it and then after that we blow off the surface get off all the dust and then go ahead and wet it down and this is what that final product looks like you wouldn't have even known that we had a problem there of it actually settling as much as it did with the end product now as mentioned stone dust they use for their bedding material they also use a masonry sand for their jointing compound. And in addition to that, there's no geotextile. Especially with newer home builds, I'm always going to use a biaxial geogrid somewhere in my base material. And we build a lot on clay. So in that case, I'm almost always using biaxial geogrid in my paver installations. So patios, driveways, walkways, whatever it might be, I love to just add it in. It's cheap insurance for us to use so it's just something that uh, goes that extra mile and with that settling would have probably held up a little bit better but that was quite a bit of settling to allow for a geotextile to be able to bridge over that settling along with a geogrid we may have seen it held up a little bit better but ultimately that was a major settlement that we saw there. But let me know what you think caused this in the comment section. Do you think that my conclusion is correct or do you think that this was caused by something else? And have you seen this before? Leave it in the comment section below. Hey, I hope this video's helped you in some way. If it has, please give this video a like and subscribe to this YouTube channel for more hardscaping content like this. Thank you so much for watching.